So I just heard the guys pull in. Um, so I'm gonna get them going to work. And today we're going to make a uh, pattern for the next few planks. And I gotta jump on the stem and stern and work on finishing fairing in those sawn frames and getting the rabbit cut so that we can uh, get these cedars on soon. So these are what we're gonna make the next planking patterns out of. So we gotta lay out two that are 40 feet, and then we gotta make sure that we square their butts so that they butt up really nicely together. And then we're gonna to wanna to grab the really long ruler and just mark a straight edge through the middle of it so that we can put the straight edge back on it and line mm -hmm. it up when we do the uh, planking. And then the first step is gonna to be to strike a perfectly straight edge on the bottom. So to do that, we'll grab a string put a nail at either end, pull it super tight, go down it with the square, and then go down it with the long ruler and connect those. And then we gotta measure on the hull and find where all the stations land and the frames. And then we can lay that out on here and plot those points. And then once we have the two patterns ready, we can go pick the cedar and start scarfing them up. And while you guys are working on this, I'm gonna jump in the boat and go work on the stem and the stern and fairing in those sawn frames and working on chopping the rabbit. And that's gonna take me a couple days to do both stem and stern on starboard and port. So I think by the time you guys get the patterns made, get the cedar picked, get the cedar cut, the cedar scarf, it has a little time to glue, that should give me enough time to get that done in there. Okay. And then when you guys are wrapped up with that cedar and it's about ready to be hung, I should be done with the rabbit and the frames and we can start putting them on. Cool. At least that's the plan, let's see what happens. You guys feel good about what you need to do with this? Yeah. Sweet. All right, I will uh, let you get to it. Holler if you have any questions. Okay. All right, so that is about 90% of the way there. There's a little more fairing out to do. I gotta go a little bit deeper, uh, but I wanna leave that until we start to bend the planks on here and see how all of this looks. Cause I'm doing it with a fid and the plank sometimes sits in there just ever so slightly different. So instead of getting this totally perfect and totally finished and then going to bend a plank in and finding out that we're half a degree off or something like that, uh, this is enough that we can steam the plank into here if we need to steam it. And then we can work it down and kind of work the plank and the rabbit at the same time. But be sure that we're gonna stay smooth and fair through here. So when we jump in and put a plank here in the middle, we can tweak it a little bit, but it's gonna be so minor that we'll be able to uh, extend those tweaks into the higher and lower sections without any problem. So now I think it is about time to wrap it up, call it a day. The guys made some great progress on the pattern out there and they've been working on picking some cedar. The uh, stern here is all done. Tomorrow I'll jump onto the stem and hopefully by the end of this week we'll be putting some cedar on.
What we've done here is we, we got the ribbons on the hull, we got the frame squared out a little bit better, and then we did some detailed measurements and figured out where the shear strake was going to land, where the oak was going to land, where the cedar was going to land. Uh, we took those numbers and added up the thickness of the deck plus the shear strake plus the four cedar planks and that gave us a measurement which we marked on all of the molds and that is right up here and it is titled bottom of the cedar. So then Aaron and I just went through and we took off the ribbon on either side of the hull that was going to be in the way of that first cedar plank going on. So that first cedar plank would be pretty easy. We just got to back it out and other than that there's nothing to fit it to. So that's just going to go right on the hull. We'll fit a cedar plank above that, and we'll probably have to take off the next ribbon when we do that. And then we'll be able to pull out, do some bracing, pull out the molds, steam in the next round of frames, or the last round of frames actually, uh, and then start working on some deck structure, which will be really, really cool. I'm super psyched for that. Uh, so we're making progress. Um, ben and George are outside, and they're working on gluing up the first cedar plank. Tomorrow they'll work on the next one, and uh, in the next few days here we'll be able to start putting those on. Hello llamas. Yeah, one's taking a dust bath. So in each field the llamas have a uh, spot where it's kind of gravelly and I don't know how they do it, but they establish a dust bath. And uh, they go and they roll around in there. Well, it's a little uh, glimpse of life on the boatyard farm. <laughs> Rabbits are pretty much done, so I'm hoping tomorrow that we'll see about putting a cedar on the boat. Fingers crossed it goes all right. Stuff seems a little temperamental, but up here there is way less twist and there's a lot less shape, uh, so there will be less edge setting, and I think the twist is really, I mean, everyone who works with cedar says that it'll bend, but that's the common thing is that it doesn't like to twist, and I think that's what we were really fighting in the stern, and we won't be fighting it anymore, so hopefully the cedars will go on easier. We're gonna find out real soon. <laughs> so we got the next plank that's ready to go. It'll be the first cedar. Hopefully these cedars stay on the boat. Uh, and we just double checked it with the pattern and make sure that everything's good to go, and it is. So you guys can get the pattern out of here. And then the next thing we need to do is grab a whole bunch of eight inch clamps. And we can just probably hang them on the ribbons here. Cause we're gonna be putting this plank right up on top of these little blocks that Aaron and I put on. So if the clamps are right in here somewhere, we'll be able to just grab them. We also need to find the two little step ladders and stage those on the side, because uh, we're gonna have to be jumping up a little bit. We're starting to get pretty tall. So our next step is to put the plank up there. And it's gonna be a little tricky. There's a, this thing's getting a little long and there's some pretty good obstacles. And then we also need to be really gentle and careful with the cedar. Like as you guys have noticed, it's yeah. not as tough as the oak. Um, so if we like really bang into one of these clamps or something, we can put a 
a pretty big dent in it pretty easily. Can you let it come out onto the plant? What we're going to do is we're going to start at 6 here. Okay. And <clears throat> normally what we've been doing is putting straps from one of the bronze floors or one of the sole beams mm -hmm. over and around to the cribbing or around the boat or to a block on the other side, whatever, to add set them down, which has been working really well. But here, what I think we should try doing is grabbing some of the bark lamps okay. um, and see if we can put it on the ribbon here and onto the plank and just bring the plank down. So you put a few loose clamps on, kind of pull it in a little bit, put some clamps down, tighten those up, tighten it down, tighten those up, and then just work out like one or two molds or so at a time until we get out to the stem and the stern. Does that make sense? And if you go to go down and it doesn't move, you just gotta, yeah, loosen up the clamps, pulling it in. So that you lose some friction and and like if I have up. to start forcing something I should let you know that at some point you may have to start steaming. Yeah. Um for this it should all go down in place pretty well. If you gotta force something it means that something's something's wrong. We shouldn't really have to do that much. And then uh when you put the clamps on you can either put them towards the top, the middle, or the bottom, and that just depends on what the twist is. So if it's like here where I'm touching on the bottom and open at the top, I probably want the clamp a little closer to the top. Yeah. And it's going to change throughout the boat depending on where it is. So I'm happy with how this fit. I think we just got, I mean, I know, we just got a little bit of backing out to do, which isn't crazy. Um, so I'm gonna go through and mark that and do that. And then what I'd love for you to do is we'll get you set up with any fouling paint. And you can go through and paint between all of those Sharpie marks. And then by the time you're done painting that, I'll probably be done backing this out. So this plank needs some backing out uh, in the middle, which we haven't done yet. But I made some lines here where I'm hitting. I'm just going to go through and roughly connect the dots. Uh, I got up at 5 o'clock this morning to fire up the steamer so that we could bend in the stern end of the cedar plank here. 
And we are now getting into uh, summer here. So we are in the low 90 Fahrenheit during the day uh, with kind of matching humidity. So for us New Englanders who are used to kind of the cold and the cooler weather, this heat at the beginning of the summer is pretty brutal. Uh, so we didn't want to be running the burner in here when it's already 90 degrees. So I came out super early to get it done and the uh, solenoid here gave up the ghost. So I played with it for a while this morning and it wouldn't work. Uh, so we're going to work on fastening the plank and today I'm going to have to run out and go see if I can get a new one of these rigs. They're made for frying turkeys or at least this one was and I don't think it was meant to run non-stop as long as we've been doing it. Um, so it's kind of how it goes with this stuff I guess but kind of a bummer this morning. I was really psyched to get out here early and get going and get this steamed in before it got hot but Turkey fryer had other plans apparently. <laughs> All right, we'll see if this one lasts any longer. This was kind of a mission to find. They uh, had to go into town to run some errands anyway, so we went to Home Depot, they didn't have any. Went to Lowe's, they didn't have any. Checked Walmart, they didn't have any. Nor did Tractor Supply. I think wheels are all pretty close to each other. So I ended up calling down to Cabela's in Hartford, which is about an hour away, and they had a couple options in stock, and this seemed to be the best one. So, let's see what happens. So, this should work out pretty well for us, and uh, I will set the alarm again for 4.40 tomorrow morning and get up and see if we can get the end of this plank steamed in. Well, it's five o'clock the next morning, and uh, I guess we'll try this again. All right, well, glad that started. Now I'll finish getting the rest of the system set up and see if we can get this bad boy steamed in place. So I'm gonna steam the very, very end of this again. It bent in pretty nicely, but I got back here and felt like standing it up into the stern post, I was fighting it too much. And the cedar really is it's kind of a, it's a very temperamental beast. So I wanna be careful with it. Uh, definitely learned our lesson about snapping planks off, putting them into the stern here, and we don't wanna repeat that performance. Okie dokie, I'm trying this again. Yeah, like three minutes ago. I'm good now. <laughs> well, yeah. You got a queasy stomach. You might want to uh, look away. But I was going with the pull shot and it slipped. And I just cut right through my fingernail. Kind of things happen, you get yourself once in a while. I'm gonna go tape this up and get back to it. <laughs> There's some of me in the pole saw. That's cute. We got some uh, epoxy if you wanna put it back. Yeah, there we go. Just epoxy myself back together. So yesterday, George and I did a bunch of plugs. But we left a few for this morning. Fun. 
fun. Do you get to that point, you know what I'm talking about, where uh, they have their own pulse? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's your pulse, but mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right here. So you're about like a quarter inch high? Yeah, and we're right on here. Maybe a 30 second low, but that's not worth fussing about right now. Right. That's really close. I think we'll switch over to the spoke shave and finish it up. All right, since you guys are kind of at an impasse with the planking, uh, making the planks, you gotta wait for some glue to dry. And I'm pretty occupied. I really wanna get this one settled down and cinched up. Uh, we can go down to the wood yard and start picking framing stock. So, we're gonna see how long our longest one is here. If memory serves me, it's 10 or 11 feet, but I don't wanna go just like that. Yeah, if you make them somewhere between 9 and 10 feet, that should be about perfect. All right, lads, that's your pile. Yep. Don't worry, they're really nice and light. That's a bold-faced lie. Folks are consistently asking how I keep the tools sharp, and for the longest time, I was using these uh, Mark II honing jigs from Lee Valley. I like them a lot; they work really well. And I do those with a diamond stone for really rough work, and then just a relatively inexpensive combination stone, followed by my—I don't know which ancestor, but my ancestors 
Arkansas stones. So this one is a natural stone, and I don't know what grit it is. It doesn't, it's so old, it doesn't correspond to any of the modern stones. Um, it's pretty fine, works well. I've got one that's even harder and finer that I use if I like really need to get something super sharp. But since we started doing the bow, and we started, I mean, just working white oak and black locust constantly, it's a little slow doing it by hand, although I do get better results by hand. Um, so what I've been using the last little bit is this work sharp here. A bunch of woodworkers recommended it to me. They said that in like a production shop, they, they really enjoyed it. They thought it put an okay edge on and did it fairly quickly. And so far, that's been my experience as well. So I've really been beating on this one and a quarter chisel. I mean, not beating on it, but you know, hitting it with a mallet and plunging it into dry white oak doing the rabbit in the stern, and it's definitely starting to get dull. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw this on the work sharp, give it a quick touch up. It's not gonna be a perfect edge, but it'll be plenty sharp enough to get back to work. And what I found with the really hard and abrasive timbers like the white oak, is that if I take the extra time and make the chisel like really insanely sharp, it doesn't last for very long. And it gets to the point where you can kinda sorta shave with it, but not really. And then the edge just stays there and I work that edge on whatever I'm doing for the next day, two days, three days, a week, depending on how much I'm using that tool. And then I go and sharpen it up again and taking the extra time to get it crazy razor sharp, just, it doesn't seem to be, you know, too applicable, too practical. Uh, but what I will say that once we get towards the interior and we start doing things where we want a little smoother and finer finish and I care more about grain tear out and that kind of thing, We'll go back to spending a little bit more time, but for the framing and cutting the rabbit and all that kind of stuff, uh, I found the work sharp to be plenty sharp for my needs. So I'm just touching it up. I do one of the finer grits and between the grits, I just lap the back really quick on the oil stone. So there's a tiny little burr that forms. I wanna get rid of that before we go on to the next one. I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but I'm to the point now where I can just start to shave. So I'll take it just a little bit sharper. Uh, but generally I find if I can comfortably and easily shave a few hairs off the back of my hand, uh, that that's plenty sharp for what we're doing here. So that's shaving pretty easily and pretty comfortably. When I have a lot of tools that I have to sharpen, you can know because my left hand up to about here will pretty much have no hair on it. Cause I'll sharpen one, do a few, touch it up, do a few and be like, all right, that one's good. And then go on to the next one. And by the time I'm done sharpening them off, pretty much taking all the hair off. 
But I like that trick to, to kind of tell how sharp it is. Just be careful, don't cut yourself. Um, another one that I know people use is to just rest it on a nail. And if you go to tip and it doesn't slide off, I'm just balancing it here, then you know it's sharp enough. You don't have to push down, just, just the weight of the tool on your nail. Um, but I find you do that and you end up with a whole bunch of nicks in your nail, which I find more annoying than hair on the back of my hand that I don't even notice is missing. So that's how I do like the chisels and most of the planes. Uh, my big smoothing plane will not fit in here. Uh, so that I do on the, um, the Mark II jigs. There is a attachment that you can get on here for doing wire blades, but I don't own it. I haven't bothered to pick it up. And like I said, if you do this, be very careful, don't cut yourself. <laughs> that is more than sharp enough to go shave the oak. And before I started sharpening it, I couldn't do that at all. Like, even if I pushed really hard, I wouldn't have been able to cut my hair um, to shave like that. And it was still um, a nice smooth grain. It was going fine, it was pulling shavings. Uh, where it was like knotty or interlocked grain, it was chattering a bit, but it was still leaving a decently smooth finish and doing what I needed it to do. Uh, so now, now it'll sing.